Hello and welcome. I've always been fascinated by the space exploration, and one of my favorite space adventure is the incredible story of the Venera probe that explored the planet Venus. There is a lot of conflicting report as to which probe made it to the surface, which, uh, which didn't, which took the picture, and the infamous recording of sound from the planet's surface. So in this video, I'd like to share some of my uh, research and uh, set the record straight. So the program started in 1961 after the uh, Soviet failed to reach Mars nine times. So their attention turns to uh, Venus, which is uh, closer and uh, easier to reach. Venus is 80% the size of the Earth and uh, with a similar composition, an orbiter and lander made sense for the uh, exploration of Venus. Very little was known about it. In fact, at the time it was believed that uh, Venus harbored an ocean and its climate being closer to the sun was much warmer. An atmosphere has been detected by the passage of Venus in front of the solar disk in 1761. So things were looking up and uh, the Soviets started the Venera program with the intention of getting to the planet, landing a probe there and transmitting data, possibly with pictures, from its very surface. Now the Soviet like to do things in pairs. They usually launch two probes back to back a few days apart. So if one of them failed, they could still salvage a mission and report a success. So with that, in 1961, the very first uh, Venera 1 was launched on February 4th and failed to even leave Earth orbit. So a second probe was standing ready on February 12th, 1961, but that one gathered some valuable information about solar wind, but uh, also failed to report any data about its intended target Venus. Venera 2 launched on November 12th, 1965, but also failed to return data after its passage by uh, the planet Venus. Venera 3 was designed to enter the atmosphere and parachute down to the surface. However, it failed to transmit any telemetry almost as soon as it entered the, uh, the atmosphere, and uh, whatever was left of it may have crashed onto the surface. Now with uh, Venera 4, which was launched on uh, June 12, 1967, things got a little bit more precise, and um, an actual reading and transmission of data was received on Earth. The first reading from the probe indicated a 0.75 bar and 33 degrees Celsius. It recorded a presence of 90 to 95% of uh, carbon dioxide, almost no nitrogen, practically no water at all, and no oxygen. So after 90 or so minutes of uh, transmitting data, the, the probe completely ceased operation at uh, an altitude of about 25 kilometers from the surface. Its last transmission read 262 degrees Celsius and 15 bars. So by now the Soviet realized what they were up against. On May 16th, 1969, Venera 5 started its descent towards the planet's night side and managed to transmit data until the temperature reached 320 degrees Celsius and the outside pressure of 26 bars. Venera 6 launched shortly behind Venera 5, accomplished pretty much the same thing and went silent about 12 kilometers above the Venusian surface. We have to wait December 15th, 1970 for finally Venera 7 made a successful landing slash crashing on the surface of Venus. Parachute had ripped on the way down and a probe was left free falling all the way until impact where it bounced off and reached its final location where it recorded a constant steady 475 degrees Celsius. Now the pressure probe had failed but it was assumed to be in the neighborhood of 92 bars. Remarkably, Venera 7 survived an astonishing 23 minutes on the surface of Venus. Venera 8 was another success. This one lasted 50 minutes on the surface. It was equipped with a gamma spectrometer and a photometer. This allowed a Soviet scientist to determine the radiation level on Venus and also the visibility, which clears out about 30 kilometers above the Venusian surface. From Venera 8, the Russian concluded that the visibility would allow for pictures to be taken, which was successfully done on October 22nd, 1975 with Venera 9, which is the first spacecraft to take picture of another world and return it back to Earth. It functioned fully for 53 minutes. It reported a flat landscape dotted with rocks and lava with an overcast sky that produces no shadow. The, the, the picture was supposed to be colored and 360 degrees around the lander, but the landscape failed to open on the color camera, so 180 degrees black and white picture had to suffice. Now, three days later, and 2200 miles away, Venera 10 suffered the same camera lens malfunction and also returned pictures and data for 65 minutes. On Christmas Day 1978, Venera 11 recorded lightning in the atmosphere, 
Now this time again, neither lens cap popped open, leaving Venera 11 blind for the remainder of its 95 minutes of active life on Venus. And because of the same design flaw, Venera 12 suffered the same fate. It did not take any pictures, but it carried on board a gas chromatograph, which allowed for the detection of carbon monoxide in its lower atmosphere. Now Venera 13 and 14 were the last spacecraft equipped with the lander. They were both resounding success. They both recorded sound from the surface, took pictures, analyzed samples, and successfully returned data back to Earth. Venera 13 lasted 127 minutes, while Venera 14 57 minutes. As a sad twist, Venera 14's landscape, which has kept so much trouble to the Soviets, landed on the exact spot where the compressibility detector would measure the soil. I have a sample of uh, Venera 14th recording on the surface of Venus from uh, March 5th, 1982. I uh, cleaned it up, got rid of some noises and reduced the background. And uh, we can hear clearly when uh, Venera 14 hit the ground and bends off a little. Then the landscape popped off and we can hear them hitting the dirt at some distance. And then the drill starts. I'm not sure if this was done before, but I thought it was pretty cool. I'll leave the link in the description if you wish to download the whole sample. Venera 15 and 16 did not have any lander, but uh, mapped the surface of Venus, at least partially, in the summer of 1983. I think it's worth reflecting on the incredible engineering challenge facing the space scientists of the 60s, 70s, and early 80s, and the enormously difficult condition posed by Venus's climate. We have learned so much from the Venera program, but as usual with scientific exploration, many more questions have been raised. I hope you enjoyed this uh, presentation of the Venera program. And if you want to learn more about the uh, space exploration, may I suggest Curious Droid. It's a very informative channel with many well-researched videos, a lot more professional. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up if you like. Consider subscribing. And I will see you on the next one.